Hey, what is up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be building this awesome looking button. It's a little bit of advanced CSS, but uh, I thought I'd share this with you guys as it looks really nice. So I'm just going to demo it right here. If we hover over it, we can see the box shadow at the bottom and then we see this kind of ghost element gliding through. And it moves slightly up, so it looks like it moves towards you. And when you click the button, it has like this bouncy, bouncy effect. So this is pretty, pretty nice looking button. And I'm going to build it in such a way that the color can be customized to whatever you'd like. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so here I'm in a new folder. I just created a folder called Cool Button. I added a style... CSS style sheet with nothing in it. I called it main.css in an index.html page. I gave the page a title of cool button and then I just added the CSS link and added a h1 that says cool CSS button and then our actual button. I'm going to make this an href as hrefs are used to um, move through web pages most. So I'm going to style this a tag over here. I gave this a tag a class of btn and btn primary. So we'll be using these classes to style the button. So let's go into our main.css. We'll be doing all of our work here. And first off, I just want to add a few things here. I'm going to add a root variable called primary color. So a CSS variable. And I'm going to give it this color hex color. So here you would be able to change the the color of the button in any way you'd like make it green red whatever i'm just going to use this yellowish color to make it stand out a little bit so up here you will be able to ch only change one variable and then it would change the entire look of the button so the next thing i want to add some default stylings or reset stylings i want to give it a margin of zero and a padding of zero i want to set the box sizing to border box I want to style the web page and give it a, a, a grayish background or off-white background. So I'm going to say body, BG color, and here I want to give it an EEE. So it's this off-whitish color. So if I save this, you can see all of the margin was taken away and all of the padding was taken away. I want to center these two things in the middle. So I'm just going to use a very basic alignment of text align center, and it pushes it to the center. So I want to give this body a line height of 1.7 and then a font family of Arial. Just like this. If I save this, you can see that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, and in order to push the button a little bit more down from the H1, I'm just going to style the H1. And then I'm going to say margin dash bottom of 5 rem. If we save this, we can see the, the, the button is pushed down a little bit. So now we're going to style this button and I'm going to start off with the, just the basic stylings of the button and then we're going to add the color and then we're going to add the pseudo selector that makes it jump, have that ghost jumpy effect. Okay, so for the basic button, I'm just going to say text decoration of none. So this would just remove that blue underline and then I'm going to give it a text transform. So we make the text inside of the button uppercase. Next thing I want to do is just um, give it a padding. You won't be able to see the padding now because there's no border around this button. But I'm going to give the padding of 1.3 rem and 3 rem on the sides. If I save this, you won't be able to see it. But if I go inspect and I view it there, you can see the padding is being set around. Okay, so what I want to do now is give it a border radius of 10 rem. So the reason I'm giving a border radius of 10 rem, which is a huge number, is it gives it a pull shape. So if I actually do add a border here, one pixel solid, and let's just say a black color, we can see it has this pull shape now. But I'm going to remove the border, so I'm just going to say border none. And the reason I'm putting border none here is because if you were to use a button element tag, instead of an A tag, it would come with a standard border. So this just removes the border. Okay, the next thing I want to do is give it a display of inline inline block. Okay, 
and then a position of relative. And the reason I'm using position relative is because the pseudo selector we're going to use, which is the after pseudo selector, we're going to place that after element that it creates um, inside of this button. So we're going to place that position absolute to the parent element. Okay, so here I just want to give it a cursor pointer and then a transition of all of 0 0.2 seconds. If I were to save that, uh, last thing I just want to give this a font size of 1.3 rem. So it's a little bit bigger. And I think that is it for the button style. Next thing I want to do is just style that button primary class. So we can say button dash dash primary and give it a background color. Let's just say color of that CSS variable we saved up here. So dash dash primary. And if we were to save that, we can see the button showing up correctly now. We want to just change the text color inside to a white. If we save that, we have this nice looking white um, and yellow button. Okay, so I'm going to style the, the hover effect that gives it that border uh, a box shadow at the bottom and moves it up a little bit so it looks like it com it's coming towards you. So I'm going to say btn and use the hover and here I'm going to say translate actually transform translate y and we want it to move upwards. So in order to translate y upwards we have to go into the negative th negatives so we can say minus 0 0.3 rem. And then I want to give it a box shadow of 0, 1 rem, 2 rem, and RGBA of just a black transparent color. And we transparency of 0.2. If we save this and we hover, we can see it animates already. And the reason for the animate animation is this transition all. So if we were to remove this transition all, it would just jump up. So you can see it doesn't have any animation so we're gonna put this back in and save and now it has this nice looking animation with the board box shadow at the bottom and the translate y upwards so it looks like it's coming towards us i'm just going to give this a timing function of ease out save and it's you can't even notice it but i just like using uh, ease out okay so the next thing we want to do is when we click the button we want to do push a little bit down and the box shadow should also look like it's going down. So in order to do this, we're going to say BTN. Why do I keep on typing BTH? BTN and on the active class, we want to transform and translate on the Y axis again. But instead of going up that amount, we want to go uh, down a little bit. So we can say minus 0 0.1 rem. And then we want to give it a box shadow that is less um, than 1 rem. So we can say 0 0.5 rem and then 1 rem sp um, spread. And here we can say RGBA of the exact same color. Okay, I did not want to do that. So RGBA. And in here I'm just going to add the same black as up here. If I were to save this now and go back to my button... We can see the animation in, and if I were to click, we can see it, the box shadow goes a little bit down and the button goes down as well. So it just has this nice looking 3D effect. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is start adding the pseudo selector for that ghost when you hover over it. So this is the bit more advanced part. So I'm going to say BTN. So here I'm going to create the pseudo element for after. So this will create another element. And when you use these pseudo elements, you should always add a content property. I'm just going to add an empty content. And then I'm going to display this property as inline block, the exact same as the actual parent button. And we're going to give it a position of absolute. And now we can use the top and left properties. So I'm going to place a top of zero and left of zero inside of the parent container. I'm going to give it a width of 100% and a height of 100%. Next thing, I'm going to give it a border radius, the same 10 rem as at the top. So the pseudo element should also have the same um, border radius pull shape. Then I want to give it a Z index 
of minus one and a transition because we're going to transition this uh, pseudo element we want to transition this all and we want to give it a 0.3 seconds and a ease out as well if we save this we won't see anything happening yet and the reason for this is we have to add this after selector to our primary and our hover so let's do it to our primary we can say btn dash dash primary and then add the after selector and here we just want to give it a background color the same background color as our primary and yeah that's that's it so if we save this it's still not showing because we want to add it on the hover state so just below the hover we can say btn when the button is hovered we want to select the after selector pseudo class so here is where the magic happens so here we're going to add the following transform and we want to scale on the x-axis and the y-axis so on the x-axis we want to scale it with 1.4 and on the y-axis we want to scale it with 1.6 times the original size and we want its opacity to go so if we don't put the opacity now and we save this should just increase in size like this so you can see the pseudo selector element the the after pseudo class um, creates a bigger button this is the scale part so if i were to remove this and save we won't see that so now we have this jumping effect but we want the jumping effect to go from one opacity all the way to zero so we can say opacity zero and now it's going to give that ghost looking effect so it goes all the way out and this transition we placed on here um, takes 0 0.3 seconds and then it disappears so it goes from one opacity which is behind this button and it goes all the way and scales upwards and then it disappears with the opacity of zero so that is it for this button design i really hope you enjoy this and i hope to see you use this in your projects i'll be doing more of these little videos for css tricks and nice animations and uh, yes i hope you enjoyed this video i'll be leaving the source code down in below for the github link and that is all for today and just for these of you who stayed till the end i hope you have an amazing 2021 and new year may it be blessed and just keep coding so thank you see you next one cheers